the start of a brand new year. New year, new me. No doubt you might have said a couple of times in the past, but this year I want to empower you on your financial journey. And what better way to kick off by actually giving you a six step financial MOT, if you like, actually working on our financial wealth health. We want to make sure that we are as in fit a shape just as we would with our bodies with our finances. Now this is specialist video. I'm going to take you through the six steps that I think really will change your financial life if you do them in 2022 and beyond. But this video is special because I don't just cover the practical things about money. I also share with you the spiritual or deeper laws and principles we should understand about using money. I don't think you're going to find it anywhere else. So absolutely stay all the way to the end. So the first key indicator for our financial health ahead I want to focus on is does your budget, how you spend your money actually reflect what you want to invest in the future? So you might have heard of a little budgeting method that I talk about in this channel. It's called the Money Stacks Method. This is the physical copy of the budget book. And I've also got a spreadsheet, which you've probably seen a couple of times as well. It's a budgeting method that I devised that is based on goals and habits rather than just simply using every pound as best as we can. It's really tailored, personal and based on you actually investing in the life that you want starting today. So let me explain. And really when we talk about money, for me as an, a teacher and educator, I talk about four pillars of money. And what we really need to focus on is thinking about a couple of key areas. So that would be how we spend our money. Are we spending well on the things that we want to invest in in the future? Second pillar being, are you saving well? So are you thinking about things like maybe getting a new home, perhaps even you're wanting to travel, things like that where actually you want to save up larger amounts to do things differently in your life. It can also be paying off debt, for example. We then have investing well. And investing is literally investing in our future. So creating new incomes, perhaps with retirement funds, pensions, investment ISAs, where we're investing, giving other people, other companies money to then get a growth and profit on that for an income for us in future. Investing is also in yourself. So we're talking personal development, we're talking even business development. If you've got ideas that you want to invest in, really thinking about what am I using my money for to invest and create the better future that I want. And then finally, the last pillar is giving well. Now this pillar is extremely important to me. I really encourage everyone, this is one of the fundamental habits that everyone should have because it changes you as a person. It changed our family considerably through putting it into action. And the giving principle is I believe that aiming for about 10% is what I feel comfortable with in my own life. 10% of our money every single month we give to wherever we feel spiritually uplifted from that past month. So it can change. It can also, it could be a church, it could be an organization, it could be a person. <laughs> Even, you know, if you feel that you got some wisdom from the person serving you McDonald's or perhaps, you know, the waitress at a restaurant, if they just said the right thing at the right time that inspired you, we've also been known to do that. Now, why I go for 10%, it's a spiritual principle. So a lot of religions and organizations will talk about that kind of base level. But I think for me, it's that magic number that feels right to assign to where I've had uplift from the world. I send it back into the world so that it can ripple effect and do good things. Here's the thing though, and people will always say, oh, you know, giving, I can never do that. Or, you know, charity starts at home. Here's the thing, the habit of giving, if you do not have it in your budget, I know that you might struggle in some way with some of the other habits. The moment that I see you covering giving and investing and saving, I feel like you're doing the absolute best you can to improve your mindset, the things that you want to see happen in the world. So for this key indicator, you need to have some level of spending plan based on actually what you're spending right now, a very honest representation. And the easiest way to do it for me is either to have a physical budget book and my link to my my budgeting book is in the description. You can go and check it out. It's available on Amazon and it's got physical, if you like, paper, writing everything down. That's one method to do it. I use spreadsheet with my family, as you might have seen. So literally, you need to have some metric for how you're spending your money right now. What are your essential bills? Your mortgage, your council tax, electricity, gas, water bill, if you pay that. It's going through everything that you pay out 
on a paycheck by paycheck basis. Now, if you don't have regular income, you would be best just to use an approximation for the income that you get in as well. If you've got a wage, then that's super easy. You know exactly what you're getting every single month. I'm self-employed in our house, so our money can vary every month depending on what we want to take from the business, but we tend to take the same amount. So again, mine is quite static. But you need to have some representation of how you're honestly spending your money right now. That doesn't mean that we can't change it now for moving forward, but just knowing exactly you know, how much do you spend on the quality of food that you're you know, feeding yourself and your family? How much do you need to get yourself to and from work or travel and things like that? List it all down. Especially important, debt repayment, so mortgage, credit cards, loans, anything like that. You need to know how much you owe them and also the minimum amounts and the interest you're paying. And you also need to then think about the other habits that are important. It's not just people wanting money from you, it's about you using your money. So this is where the other three columns come into investing, saving and giving. And so I've labelled it all out for me and my family into those columns and I've prioritised it. Giving is first, it's the thing that comes out top line from our gross amount every single month. We then also give gifts on top of that. So giving, we call it a tithe, 10%. That is the spiritual element of our money. And then we have gifts on top. But I've literally, and this is not our budget, this is just an example budget, I've broken down everything into the main columns. Now, once you have that hierarchy, then you need to look at it and say, okay, does this actually align with what I want to value in my life and invest in? If you're being honest, is there too much on takeaways and you're concerned about you know looking after your health, you want to be fit and healthy for as long as you can, well, we need to now change that habit. We need to now change how we're doing things. What about investing? You know, Are you creating additional incomes through investment ISAs and pensions? If not, well, how are you going to have money for when maybe you perhaps can't earn it the way you currently are or multiple incomes? If you want to be debt free, have you actually got money every single month paid to that day. These are all things, it's an active budget and it has to align with actually what's important to you. So do that step, go through it, go through a hard look at actually how true you are to spending your money and start from the word go. So just in the same with losing weight, money has a similar fundamental rules that we have to apply. If you were putting on weight, you know that the calories in, what you're consuming is more than what you're actually using every day. If it breaks even, you're not putting on weight, then you know you're balanced calories in equal out and then vice versa. With money it's as simple as if you're overspending what you have you're going into deficit, you're going into debt and so you need to flip that. You need to make sure that ideally you're breaking even or making more than what you need and manipulate and actually see what truly is important to you. And I would also say at this stage as well you've got to have this important goals so be very honest with yourself and say, okay, what are the goals I want to focus on for the next three months, next six months, even the next year ahead? Put them down on a budget. Even if you're just a sign, let's say it was travel was important to us. Even if it's literally you're putting five or 10 pounds, you're starting the process of believing you can make it happen and then waiting for additional money to come your way. And the great thing about my spreadsheet, indeed, some of those goals in particular, I want to enable you with it. So the first thing I also talk about is also additional money. I'm going to assume that you just don't earn the money that you can see. The world is fantastic fantastic like that where there'll be additional money that comes to you gifts or there's a check in the post or you know some a raise at work something unexpected set out a plan as well at the start for how you want to spend that additional money now in this example this random example we've got like a tax refund a competition when we've got bonuses but that money you haven't accounted for in your budget. So what do you want to do with it? Well, if it's me, I first of all will say 10% is given away, you know, to wherever I've had spiritual uplift, I've been inspired by something or someone in the world, I let that money go out and do a ripple effect. And then it could well be that you say, well, I'm going to invest half of it and I'm going to pay off debt with the other half, whatever you want. But get excited about extra money coming your way. It's one of the first things that we start to realise that actually money doesn't just come to us from the sources we think. It comes in many different ways that we cannot predict. And then also in the spreadsheet, if you've got things like financial freedom goals, which we talk about on this channel, you can cater for that. Knowing, okay, how much investments do I roughly need to have based on what percentages I think I can get as returns on average and withdrawal rate, you can do that. And the most important thing for me, I 
like to make sure as much as your money stay in your pocket to do with it what you want to do. And so debt repayment for me is definitely a first level goal if you haven't got any. I believe you can do lots of goals at one time, but I know for some people they like to focus on getting rid of debt, high interest debt. So actually, you know, things like knowing your debt free debt here will be inspiring to you. It doesn't need to be set in stone. It's not gospel, but it allows you to say, okay, I actually want to make this a focus. What do I need to do in my budget to make that happen? So now you've got that fundamental budget, that spending plan. Really the second indicator is if someone was to look at your budget, could they honestly say that you are matching physical principles about money and also spiritual higher levels? I've touched upon this a little bit, but when I say about spiritual higher levels of principles, it means the principles that change your heart and your mind and also your kind of value that you perceive with yourself and money. How much of a hold does money actually have on you? Is it, is it the God in your life? Is it the person who tells you the master? Or have you flipped the script? Are you actually the master and money is your slave? And so when I look at a budget, if I can see things like giving, personal development, goal, perhaps even, you know, you've got financial freedom or investments, I know that you are starting to become the master of your money. It's incredibly empowering to see these habits and know that genuinely somebody can see that money doesn't control them. So when you look over your budget right now for your health, are these things that you want to create? How are you going to make them happen? Do you believe that you can have all these fundamental physical laws such as saving and investing where you physically will see a return in your money, a growth in it, but also things that are looking after your heart and your spirituality with money. See, money is, is this incredible tool. We think it's something hugely important, but actually we get to control how we use it. And money is really kind of like a trust relationship between you and somebody else. That's all it is, a buyer, a seller. We use this entity, money, cash, coins, whatever. It could be peanuts, it could be apples, it doesn't matter. This thing to say basically, okay, you've got a goods and service that I would like. I'm going to guarantee this amount of something, money, apples, whatever, is going to be worth the same amount in future. Can we exchange talents? So I buy your talent that you've managed to do that I couldn't do myself and we exchange it. So for example, my ancestors might have been farmers and things like that, but right now I'm not so good at farming or creating food for us physically. But I can go to the supermarket and exchange what I do best, which is helping others in this way. The talents that I have, I get money for, I can then use that money to then get service from someone else who can do me a favor. And that's really the whole basis of money. And again, when we start to have the habits and the mindset within our spending that aligns with that master slave, us being the master of money, that's when everything changes. And it's also key to call out, one of the things that I learned the most in the past couple of years was these same principles, the physical and the spiritual higher principles of money. If I applied that not only in my personal life, but my business, Again, I'm just allowing all the money that comes my way to benefit from it. For me to change also how I interact with people that I provide service to see the value I can provide before they give me their money. So if you're not doing this in your personal life, perhaps it's time to try. If you're not doing it in your business life, I would love to encourage you to try it as well. So next I want to talk about a very practical element. We've talked about the spiritual or the higher laws and the, you know some of the habits we want to see in our budget. Now what about actually the physical mix? tricks. We're getting to actually making sure all of our money is intentionally spent. So that is looking at your budget, all these amounts that you spend regularly on, you know, your gas, your electricity, your mobile phone, looking at the money values and say, okay, these are essential to keep me safe and dry, but I'm going to make sure they're as efficient as possible, that I'm actually truly getting as much value as I can for what I pay out. And once a year, at least I would do this whole exercise, but it is a case of going through your entire budget, what you're spending on, and looking at the value and saying, can I make it smarter? So for example, I love to use compare the market as a tool to get the best deals on our electricity bill, our gas bill, even our mobile phones. We've got pet insurance and home insurance. We do that as well. It could well be even thinking about your pension. So we've got pensions with Pension B and Vanguard. We've also got junior ISAs with Vanguard and my own investment ISAs. So I would, at the start of the year, look at that physical level and evaluate, you know, how are our pensions performing, our investments? Do I need to make any tweaks? Do I need to do any rebalancing? That's about looking at what I'm getting value from now 
and what also I want to achieve in future. You know, is there parts of your life in this step that you look at your budget and how you're spending and say, no, now it's time to upgrade that. So I've maybe spent, you know, let's say £200 on food a month or £300. The quality's not been so great. So what do I need to do to improve that? Do I need to go somewhere different? Do I need to change how I'm cooking, batching or learning how to cook, perhaps going to night school? Or do I want to, you know, do something different, try vegan or vegetarian? Looking at every single thing on a physical level is where you then make the tweaks. And then actually you realize how much money is in your budget for improving and investing in the life that you want. Now, the fourth key indicator on this financial MOT cleaning up our financial health is realizing more of the mindset piece. So we've talked about a lot of the physical money management, but now we're moving on to some of those spiritual principles that I mentioned at the start. The first being things like net worth, investment, top line, even your debt free date. They're all really useful to keep in mind if you're wanting to see linear progress, physical progress of how you're doing on a journey. But they do not change your heart or how you feel about money. No value of net worth or investments portfolio or even managing to clear off debt can make you feel a certain way about money. It can't suddenly make you feel secure if you never felt that before while you were paying off the debt or building up investments. Now, I covered this recently in a video that was basically describing how earning more money doesn't make us feel richer because it's all to do with fundamentally how we believe money interacts with us, our place in the world and how we use it. We think that physical external indicators will make us feel a certain way when they're in the future. We look forward to that day. We postpone our happiness, if you like, until we've hit certain parameters. But if you're not happy with your money and what you're doing with it right now, no amount in the future, no experience will suddenly make you feel secure or happy. So in this step, we're going to cover a mental wealth review. This is actually looking at what are our true feelings about money. Now, I really say this is one step alone. If you ignored everything else, would change the game for you with your money moving forward. When you look at actually what are some of the fundamental things you believe about how money works, how you earn money, your place in the world, and then the ripple effect of actually your management of it. If you actually look at what you tell yourself, your thoughts and feelings on a daily, on a weekly, every time you use money, that is what's going to dictate actually the health of your relationship with money. If I'm constantly spending or saving or investing because I think I must do that in order to feel secure, well, what happens is it's driven by lack. So those feelings of inadequacy, insecurity, every time I do the action, I'm then creating more of it. And that's why no amount saved or invested would then make you feel secure enough that would change your feelings. So for this step, it involves getting a piece of paper, as simple as that. And I actually still do this step with myself every couple of months, particularly at the start of a new year as well, when I'm really wanting to usher in better mindsets and habits that are going to serve me in the year ahead. I take a bit of paper and on my own, without anyone around, I write down how I honestly feel about money and resources. What do I feel are the key things I'm constantly thinking and saying to myself? I might not be saying them out loud. It might even be some of the things that you do say out loud without realizing it, but some of the things that I truly believe about money is that you think that there's never enough, no matter how much you earn, it always seems to go out the door. I'm always in debt. I'm rubbish with money. I'll never make enough to cover my bills. You know, there's never enough to go around. I can't afford that. These are these constant conversations that we're having with ourselves and others. How many of us grew up perhaps being told, no, we don't have money for that. We're poor, we don't deserve that. Those stay with you. So I tend to write everything down and be very honest. Now on the flip side of that, one column, everything I'm really thinking about money, I then write what would be an empowering statement that would totally counteract that. So for example, if you believe that you can never earn enough money to have overflow in your life, it always feels like you're scrimping and saving, there's never enough, regardless of your income, the flip side of that would be, I have more than enough money for my needs and then some. I can invest, I can save, I can give without fear that it will run out. And you see, that's an empowering statement. And I would go through everything that I was thinking 
working and create that flip side. Now that new flip side model is then what I try and use to calibrate for my year ahead. See, the mind is a very powerful thing. The more that you repeat and talk to yourself with what you want to experience, the mind then looks for examples and experiences to back that up. So even right now you might think, oh Jennifer, you know, I can't possibly think that way. Just try. The things that you're thinking right now, how are they serving you? Are they actually building you up? Or are they tearing down what you're creating in your life? If they're taking away, then it's time to add better truths and make a choice of what you want to believe moving forward. Now, the fifth wealth indicator that I love to really get people excited about is creating additional incomes. Particularly at the start of a new year, we have that process of, you know, we kind of get rid of the old, start afresh, mindset as positive as we can be perhaps as well. And what about creating additional ways to bring money to you? I firmly believe everyone has at least two or three income sources possible within them. You might not think at the time, but I'm going to ignite that spark. And it's why I talk about having passive and semi-passive income sources. So in the case of me I had only one income source really way up to about 37 or 38 years old the past two to three years I just was 40 a couple months ago past two to three years I focused on creating additional income sources that are as passive as possible so I decided to start teaching online on YouTube I then do products and courses I've then got ad revenue from YouTube you might have seen that video as well I'll you know actually coach people I'll also think about you know is there products that I like to refer people to so I affiliate payments, all hosts of different things that I do that brings money to us. And that over time starts to grow if I can really add value to people and make a difference in the world. Because they always say, you know, to make a million pounds, you just need to exchange it for a million pounds worth of value to help someone or to help a group of people. So when you're thinking about a new year, I want you to get excited about creating additional ways for money to come to you. Do not think the amount that you earn is fixed, it's not. And the moment you tap into unlimited income sources and open your mind to the possibility, this changes everything. So at the start of the year, why not explore a big list of ideas that you have that you believe you could serve other people? So it could well be you brainstorm and say, well, I could, you know, do something on Etsy, I could create some products, I could offer my services on Fiverr, you know, I do spreadsheets, or I can do word processing, I can even do voiceovers if you've got you know, a really strong accent. There's lots of diverse need for lots of different talents but write a list of maybe five or ten things that you think would be fun that you could help other people and also charge people for. I would say as a little challenge pick one to focus on in the next three months that you're really going to try to make an effort and bring and have that as an income source for you. This is the very thing that I did when I first started. No clue how to do it. I just decided I wanted to do it. And then over time, it just becomes easier because you become more confident that you know you can add value and help other people and also charge for it if you wish. And the great thing about this indicator as well, it changes your mindset and your heart as all pretty much these habits and indicators do that I'm talking about in this video. It makes you realize your value in the world, that you you do have a purpose, that you're here for a very special reason and that we can all add to each other's journeys through financially or even on deeper levels as well. And the final indicator that can really change your financial life is actually making sure, and I've said it a couple of times, the habits and the lifestyle you want to lead is actually present in your money right now. I really believe a lot of the issues with myself and people that I work with and even people who watch my content, we all are very similar in that we believe that money drives what we can do in life. And actually, we decide what we do in life. We then use money, time, energy, all these resources to support that. You don't need the amount of money right now to have appeared before you can try and start creating something. In fact, once you decide to make a goal happen, usually you find the money, the time, the experience, the right people all appear to support you. So I don't want you to live in a world for 2022 where you're still wishing things would happen. Let's say the habit you want is to give a certain amount of money every single month, a habit that really changes your heart and mind. It moves it from scarcity to knowing how much we truly have and how grateful we should be for the money that we do have to support life then we can help someone else with it. If that's your goal to start implementing that, putting down even one pound or 50 pence or five pounds, it does not matter the amount, it's the principle and the habit. 
if that's there every single month and you're on the lookout for, you know, oh, where can I send that out into the world? Who do I feel inspired by? Who's giving me uplift? Whatever your parameters are for giving that amount away, you will then start the habit. It's kind of the same with investing. If you even start with £10 or £5, you build confidence that it's safe to do so. It's not about the amount, it's about learning the habit and the muscle and confidence with it. And so over time, people normally put more into investments, more into giving, because they can see the rewards, they can see the influence in their life. So start to believe that things are possible for you and you use money as a tool to create it from now on. No more do we believe that money decides what we do, we decide what we do, and then the money will appear and we'll use money to create it. So aim high, set a miracle goal for your money in 2022. We've actually got a podcast on the Prosperity Project that my husband and I do every week. We talk about this concept of miracle setting. It's things that we can possibly imagine happening, but we're not quite sure how. Allow yourself to dream again and particularly use your money. Don't be afraid to start using your money to design the life that you want. So to summarize for you, if I could say anything, last nugget of wisdom before you go off and actually hopefully try some of these things in your own life. In my life, I know when I've focused on these key six steps, it has had a ripple effect to change my financial health, mindset and the ripple effect of money in our life and business. I know that when I put in the habits of investing, of giving, that the money that kept coming to us kept, seemed to multiply. It was almost like the more money we'd send out the door, the more money would come back to us. When I thought about serving people and using money and tools to do that better so that I could leave my corporate job, I could do this full time. Again, the plan was there and then money was just a resource that I was going to use as smartly as possible to make it happen. Start to decide which of these six steps are most important to you in 2022 and I really encourage you to take the brave step to implement one and keep yourself accountable. Commit to it for three or six months and see the change in your world. I'd love to know which of these six steps in particular feels like it's something that you need to work on. Leave me a comment to you know which one are you going to focus on. What do you feel is the next right step for you? Maybe you've been inspired by what I've shared. I would love to know in the comments and more important than that if you feel that someone else could benefit from this video please do share it. Please do encourage them to watch it as well. I really want to help as many people as I can with the practical, but also some of the spiritual and deeper level principles around money and change their life. So thank you so much for watching today. If you'd like to check out this video right here, it's on a similar topic you might find interesting. And if you haven't, please hit subscribe as well. I'd love to have you as a regular viewer of my videos. So thank you so much for watching today. I'll speak to you very soon.